All right, so I just want to start out with the absolute most important thing first. And so Don, if we heard nothing else today, what would you hope for us to walk away with? Definitely that all of your experiences, your feelings are true and valid. So regardless of what you've walked through with the church, we just want to say that it is valid. And sometimes those experiences are invalidated, especially by those in power. So we are here to do the work <laughs> of validation for you that it's normal and okay to be where you're at. And we're hoping to offer some solutions. And some of the comments have said, you know, as we've kind of been digging into a Bible study here online, uh, you know, I've been hurt by the church. I think that's kind of the way we can kind of sum things up. And that can look a lot of different ways. It might mean we were hurt by members of the church. It might mean that we were hurt by leaders in the church. Uh, I know one person said, my family, it was actually my parents. I saw, you know, my family hurt by the church. And so, again, that can be kind of broad, but maybe some of the things that we walk away with our shared experiences. And so, you know, I think one of the biggest things is usually a betrayal of trust. You know, this is a place where I've come, I kind of let my guard down a little bit, I was looking for leadership, I was looking for spiritual answers in my life. You know, these are big questions that we're answering in the church. And so Don, will you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your professional experience that's helping us to have this conversation today? Sure. So my name is Don, and I am a licensed therapist here in the state of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. Um, and I've been practicing for 20 years, <laughs> which feels wow. really like I can't say that. <laughs> I'm too young to say that. Um, but anyway, um, it's funny because my specialty, which is not one that you'd want, is actually healing from emotional and spiritual abuse and kind of looking at, you know, how can people really become empowered to live a healthy, full life, mm -hmm. regardless of what others have chosen to do or not do. And so it's really exciting when you kind of get in touch with what you can do, uh, even though we can't control other people yeah. and we can't you know, help the experiences that sometimes come our way, we can always overcome them. And so there's so much hope in my work and I love it. So in your work, Dawn, you know, when people have experienced some sort of spiritual pain, what tends to be some of the big things that you unpack in your practice? I think the the number one thing that most people wonder about is if they are crazy. Yeah. That is probably the number one question that I get. They'll come in for their first session and we'll spend 90 minutes together and they'll unpack everything and I'll make some reflections along the way and I kid you not, almost every time at the very end they'll say, so am I crazy? And so what they really need to hear is know that, you know, how you're experiencing this trauma or this relationship that went south or whatever it looked like, your experience, once again, is true and valid. And there's nothing wrong with us for having a normal reaction to an abnormal event. But often what these people or these institutions sometimes have going on is that they make us feel like we're abnormal responding to a normal event but in actuality the reverse is true and I think it's probably we should say you know where you're not judging we're not we know that pain in churches there's two sides to every story yeah. you know and so we're just hoping to help process the pain that you know some of us carry around as a result of things that have happened and ultimately our goal is that there would be confidence restored in being a part of the church family and yeah. receiving leadership in our lives and being able to move forward without any hindrance yes exactly and really truly if we have a healthy understanding of boundaries and what we can and cannot control and what we are responsible for and what we're not you know that would say that really all we can control is our response and our reaction and so we can release you know, those people that haven't really brought a lot of life to that relationship yeah. and, you know, we can move forward. And so again, there's so much hope when we realize we don't have to have that baggage all our life long yeah. and it doesn't have to define us yeah. and it doesn't have to um, really, uh, it doesn't have to do the negative identity thing. I don't know. You know, check out that part. Out. <laughs> And I think, Don, probably the most difficult part for someone who's been hurt in the church is then I feel like you're left to resolve it on your own. Mm -hmm. Like often, maybe you even try to bring resolution or restoration to that relationship, but a lot of times I feel like there's a power differential or there's something unhealthy happen happening there that prevents that from happening. And so how do you kind of walk with people then in, 
bringing healing in kind of a one-sided dynamic? That's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I feel like when we try to resolve it the churchy way, like let's just get real, like the churchiano, churchianity way is really just going to that person and you know doing our due diligence. Yeah. And, and we can do that. And I think that's important. And we should. Yeah. We should. And, and it may not go over so well, right. you know, given the personality or whatever the situation might be for that person. And so then the question is, well, how do I experience, first of all, healing and then closure um, without that person's consent or participation? Right. And that's something that I really try to, first of all, listen and validate, which yeah. is, of course, what we're saying today that, you know, your feelings are true and valid. That's a form of validation. And then secondly, to really invite Jesus into it. And, and you know, there are some practical tips that we can share on that too. Yeah. All right, Dawn, so let's get practical. Because I know for some people, even this topic is maybe making them emotional right now. Mm -hmm. You know, or you see a church sign or you hear about so-and-so. You know, like these emotions are real. Mm -hmm. So what are some practical ways that we can start to move forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think number one for... For me would be to just really accept the challenge of I'm going to address this head on and I'm going to believe that my heart and my life are worth yeah. overcoming this you know number one to just really directly sort of commit to yep. resolving it and receiving healing um, and then secondly I feel that it's really again that invitation piece of okay Lord let's walk through this together yeah um, they say that healing from trauma is all about telling the story and mm -hmm. so if you are going to tell the story to a trusted professional like me or a safe person, um, but who's safer than Jesus, right? And he's the one that can actually go through our hearts and really discover, gosh, what are the lies that were lodged there through this experience? Yeah. And what would his truth say about that? And sometimes that can be a journaling experience. Sometimes that can be just a worship experience. Yeah. Um, but some way of externalizing the emotion and the story is often helpful. Yeah. I know that in the past when I've experienced pain, especially if it feels one-sided, you know, that I don't have that ability to have a conversation or try to bring resolution, man, writing a letter that you don't send. <laughs> <laughs> Very you know, and just I've been amazed at how um, emotionally healing that can be. I don't know if it's the process of just you know, really getting to articulate and get out, you know, what I felt and, and what felt painful to me. Yes. And so I think writing the letter that you don't send, the key ingredient there <laughs> is to be fully authentic. So oh, I, I thought you were going to say, don't send it. <laughs> like, cause I did an email one time and I started to put the person's name in the two oh, and no, I was like, no. Oh goodness. No. <laughs> Last thing I need is to accidentally get done and hit send at the end of it. So maybe not even an email, right? Let's Correct. just like get yep. a pen, pen and paper. paper. <laughs> I have a notepad on my phone, but yeah. Okay. So yeah, I not trust. sending it is key, but the second key. Yeah. The second that? key. <laughs> the second most important thing I think is to be fully authentic. Okay. And so I know this sounds a little strange coming from a Christian counselor, but I say to people, let it fly. Whatever yeah. words you need to use, however you need to just say it, say it like it is, get it out there. Um, this is about saying whatever you need to say and not worrying about yeah. consequences because we're never going to send it. Um, so it can be sort of healing to just be super real, yeah. super transparent, super authentic, and to not worry about crafting it in a certain way yeah and I did feel like that helped me to validate my own feelings mm -hmm. because I said when you did this because usually in a conversation you don't want to say you you know right but when I wrote my letter I did <laughs> I was yes. like when you did this this is how I felt and I felt yeah. hurt and I felt betrayed and it, it did I felt validated mm -hmm. you know it, it allowed me to be honest and then also to feel like yeah, no, that's true. Like that really did happen. That's how I really felt. And just the processing was really therapeutic. For Absolutely. Me. Yes. And I think the second step of that would, if we wanted to incorporate Jesus into that moment, mm -hmm. you could ask him, okay, Lord, show me how you see yep. me in this situation. And how do you understand yeah. where yeah. I'm at? And he will always, always give you something. Always. And it's life changing. I love doing that when I would pray with people, when I was working at a church, like at the end of it, I would say, now, can you just ask the Lord, what's Jesus saying to you? Yeah. And who does he say you are? Or what's his yeah. truth in this situation? Yeah. They always get something. Some people feel like I don't hear from the Lord. You know, that's hard. Yeah. But they always would get something and it always yeah. spoke right to their heart. Exactly. That's great. Another helpful intervention too is the empty chair technique. So. It's just as it says. You set up an empty chair and you speak to it as though yeah. that person is sitting there with you and you share your heart. And again, 
let it fly, be yeah. real. Don't hold back. Yeah. This is a time to really just get it out there. And that can be helpful, you know, because it's a grieving process too. Yeah. And so the empty chair is traditionally used for grieving people, but I have found, gosh, it works in, across the board. I think that sounds great. You yeah. know, but there is a layer of grief too that we may need there to process is. where you mm -hmm. have to realize, gosh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be, or he or she isn't who I thought she or he was. Yeah. And, you know, to really just release like, goodness, this is really sad. Yeah. A lot of times too, maybe now we could just run through maybe a couple of dynamics that individuals might identify with. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, significant moments have been celebrated, you know, at this this church or this place, and you know, a marriage or birth or baptism or you know, these are really significant milestones in life. So as you mentioned, that is something to grieve. It's a mm -hmm. loss, and it, a lot of times comes also with the loss of community you know, which can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. Another thing just for people, you know, to understand that I think might characterize a lot of this type of um, dynamic is, you know, usually a lot of this happens kind of behind closed doors or maybe in mm -hmm. emails or texts or communications that are more private. And so then again, it can be, you can feel very alone in it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be very isolating. And sometimes too, um, you know, the individuals who are part of this, they have big personalities or they're very likable. And so then that can be difficult because maybe other people aren't seeing it or they continue on, you know, even after you've left and you're, you know, trying to move forward, everything continues on and that can be hard to see too. Yes, yes. Usually, and I hate to make a broad sweeping generalization, but a lot of times the people who are abusing or emotionally hurting other people are that charismatic type. Yeah. And that's precisely what makes us feel isolated is everyone else sees them a different way. Yeah. And so unless they've had sort of intimate, you know, um, emotional connection with them and experience the same thing, you begin to feel like the whole world doesn't understand. Yeah. And so that's a really icky feeling. And once again, that's like, where can I go that it would be safe to share that experience, yeah. you know, with a person or the Lord or so on. Yeah. So I love how like counselors and therapists have kind of language and tools and everything. And I had a friend who was a Christian therapist and he would say, Diana, you got to do your grief work. You know, he's like, I want you to put it in a box. And then when you get to the gym, I want you to take it out and, and process it. And then also when you have like your quiet time with Jesus, I want you to share it with him. You know, but again, he called it work. Yeah. And I, I think that language is helpful because this takes effort, it takes energy, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what you're telling to us too. We, we need to intentionally choose to walk through some of these things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I feel like it's very easy to avoid it, or it feels easier, mm -hmm. but really in the long run, other relationships will suffer, other church communities will suffer if we carry that stuff around, and ultimately, your destiny, your heart are worth it. And so ultimately we want to be whole people so that we can bring that to our relationships, any future churches that we might go to, yeah. and ultimately be able to help others that have actually had the same experience. Yeah. We owe it to ourselves, to God, and to others to really rise to that occasion, but you do need a big why. You do need a big yeah. why. And so you do have to really weigh the, what is it, what does the Lord always say? Count the cost. Yeah. You know, of, you know, this is going to take effort and intention and I'm willing to face the pain and feel some discomfort because I'm worth it. My heart is yeah. worth it. And the call on my life is yeah. worth it. Because really there's, you have an essential part of the body to play. Mm -hmm. Like we need every single one, you know, and there will be something missing if we're sidelined or if we're stepping back because of pain or hurt that we're not. And obviously it can take time to handle these things. Yes. And, you know, again, there's like a process to walk through. But I think the encouragement today is mm -hmm. you're worth it and the body needs it. Like we yes. need you to step into everything that the Lord called you to be. I think the last thing that I want to mention, Dawn, and it's something, again, that's helped me in just different processes in life is always praying for that person who hurt or offended mm -hmm. me. And I've been amazed at also what that does to help bring healing to my own life. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's if it just kind of gets me outside of my own pain. It helps me remember that they're a human mm -hmm. as well, you know, and that they've They've walked through stuff, you know, they have hardships in their life, and somehow that's always helped also to kind of unhook some of the bitterness in my life. 
Absolutely. So a whole different video could be about <laughs> forgiveness <laughs> um, and how really <laughs> <Next> forgiveness. <week>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tackle that. Yeah. Um, but forgiveness is ultimately for the forgiver. Yeah. And so finding compassion is, is the first step. I will just say, though, as a caveat, I think it can be tempting in the church to jump to forgiveness and not deal with the pain. And so obviously I'm all about dealing with the pain, right? right. And so yeah. um, I get a little frustrated or sad when I see people jump to the forgiveness because they feel like they have to. Yeah. And I think I'd rather have people consider that it's a process and yeah. the beginning process is actually dealing with your own pain. Mm -hmm. And over time, we'll be able to find compassion for that person. Yeah. We can pray for them, certainly. Yeah. And then, you know, see them as a human. Yes, all of yeah. this is good. And sometimes we need distance from somebody like that too. So whether yeah. the relationship is intact or not, if they haven't changed and they're consistently picking the scabs, so to speak, yeah. that really holds us back. And yeah. so really prayerfully considering what degree of closeness is good to have with this person given the work I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I just want to emphasize something that you said because I think, again, if we've experienced pain, um, we may have been told we are not spiritually mature enough. We're not handling this. This should roll off our back. You know, we should pray, pray more. We should, we should be able to handle this. And so I think that's why there might be a tendency just to jump to forgiveness because, again, mm -hmm. that is the answer, mm -hmm. right? That's biblical. That's just, that's what we need to do to move forward. But I think what you're saying here is giving yourself permission yes. that, hey, again, this is valid. This may have even been trauma in your life. Surely it's mm -hmm. loss. Mm -hmm. And so you're worth slowing down to process the pain mm -hmm. and finding a safe place, processing it with Jesus, allowing yourself to walk through that process. And then also in conjunction with that or toward you know as you walk up down that path then of course pursuing forgiveness yes, as well yes of course yeah we all want that and i feel like everyone we talk to you know women who have been injured or anyone really they want to do that work i don't see a lot of bitterness and resentment i see a lot of just wanting to get there yeah. and so i think sometimes it can be hard to just as you said give yourself permission mm -hmm. to go there and that you're worth the extra time yeah. and actually the the pain of it yeah so Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for this time and every person that's listening and we know that their hearts are precious to you. And so Lord, we just invite you to just come and let your presence just come like a balm to everyone who's listening. We thank you Lord so much for redemption and victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.